Elliot Hulse, welcome to the Superhuman Life, brother. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. No, man, I'm, I'm so excited about this. You know, you have become somebody that's become internet famous, so to speak. You know, I don't know if that's the, the, the true terminology that, that you like to use, but, you know, you've made a name for yourself online. Uh, you've done some incredible work, and, and your life's work has really been built around this one word, you know, and this word strength. You know, from being a professional strongman, I know earlier in, in, in your career to building a massive empire with strength camp, you know, your whole philosophy back in the days was become the strongest version of yourself. And now you're kind of on this new mission, you know, to help men become strong again. So I think where I want to start here today is when did Elliot know that strength and being strong was going to be such an important part of his life and his life's work. Hmm. A long time ago, before I even knew myself, my parents were from Belize. Okay. And, uh, and they grew up fairly naturally, eating natural food, natural lifestyle, uh, from the earth, on a farm, mm -hmm. my dad talks about, um, just running in the wild. And... Uh, my parents came to America, they met each other, they got married, and uh, when my parents had me, my, my mother's brother uh, was still a young man, he must have been in his early 20s, came and lived with us. Mm. And uh, he, like my parents, grew up in Belize, climbing trees, swinging from vines, eating natural food, uh, but he was, still, he was still very much a young man, had a huge impact on me. He mm. was uh, in martial arts at the time, and he was... You, you know, I'm like maybe three, four years old and here he is doing backflips and literally chopping cinder blocks. Like he he'd do like these breathing movements and then ah, chop bricks right in front of me. And, you know, here I am at like four years old where like you, most kids only see that stuff on TV. Yeah. Right. Here I have this uh, basically a superhero living with me. He would he would just stand. He'd just stand in there and like out of nowhere, he would just bang. Mm. Do back foot. <laughs> so, um, I, needless to say, I was very impressed by him. And also, I happened to have taken on the same genetics. <laughs> mm. so, here. so here I am, like, seeing a, a future version of me. You know, he was just blessed with superhuman strength and power. Super strong guy. And so he would, as well as demonstrating his strength, and he kicking the crap out of a bag in our basement. He would take me and my brothers and, you know, we, a lot of times we, my mother would be working and my parents would be working. So he'd, he'd stay home with us mm -hmm. and he would teach us how to train. So I'm like, you know, before, before kindergarten, I'm doing push ups and I'm doing sit ups and doing chin ups and he's teaching me how to kick a bag. So, uh, I was kind of like born into it. Yeah, I was born with it and was born into it. And by the time I got to school, you know, the first I, I remember phys ed, the first time going to phys ed uh, and it's wild, like none of the kids do push ups. Tie races. And, uh, and there I was. Oh, am I, uh, I'm breaking up a little bit. huh? I got you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll have to clean it up. Yeah, so most kids were, couldn't even tie their shoelaces, and here I am, like, doing push-ups and sit-ups and stuff like that. I remember my first gymnastics class, because he also did gymnastics. He was in martial arts. He was in gymnastics. He was a bodybuilder. He ran marathons. I mean, he did all these things. Uh, I took a gymnastics class, and I remember the teachers, like, their minds were blown, because here I am, like, maybe seven years old. And you know these, like, you could do a jumping split? Yeah. And you split your legs? Like, I was doing that out of nowhere. And they, they were like, whoa, check this kid out and stuff. So... My self-esteem, you could say, or my ego. <laughs> I started to develop a, a very strong ego around strength at a very young age. So I knew that, I knew that was my gift. That's, that was the grace from God. Yeah. Um, you, grew up in, you grew up in New York, right? Did you guys have, um, I know in our schools down here in Florida, we had that, uh, the presidential fitness test, you know, like it, back in elementary school, it's like, they're going to test you for the mile. They're going to test how many pull-ups you can do, how many push-ups you can do. And, and I wasn't like you. I wasn't born uh, with strength and, and the physique that I ended up building, you know, through my bodybuilding career. I actually took the alternate route where I was 
overweight and, you know, unconfident as a kid. So that's what inspired me. But were you that kid that like ran the, the mile faster than everybody and was like crushing pull-ups and like had abs in like elementary school? See, uh, it's interesting. So yeah, the word that describes me in my life has been strength. Okay. Not endurance. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I, it was funny because I, even to this day, I don't, I can't run miles. And when I was a kid, I wasn't running miles. Like I'd beat everybody in the first 40 yards. Yeah. And I would, I was fast. I was explosive. I was strong. But even then, you know, uh, it's, it's not endurance, it's strength. So it's going I, back, it's going back to that, that original word here. That's kind of built your life's work has been built around this term strength. And you know, I've been following you and, and I saw that, uh, you recently did a comeback. So you were a professional strongman. I mean, this was really a catalyst for all of your business. All of your success was built around kind of what you were doing uh, with a lot of your own strongman work. I mean, the Strength Can Gym was built around, you know, that, that foundational training principles. But then about a year ago, you lost a significant amount of weight. And I'm sure with that, lost a significant amount of muscle. So how was that return to to strongman, um, you know, what inspired it, you know, to go from where you had lost, I think maybe 50 ish pounds or so, what motivated you to, to, to get back in the room, to, to get back on the competition floor and how did it, um, how did your perspective to training now change since you went through that dramatic transformation last year? Well, I turned 40 last year, last April, I turned 40. So <laughs> I just wanted to do everything. I just wanted to, okay. so, you know, I did all the fasting and I lost weight. And then I was like, all right, now I'm going to go back and do straw, man. I don't know. I just kind of, I'm an extremist. Mm. So, and I'm not as, as crazy as it is, or like as much as I, uh, I'm not happy about it, but it's just the way I am. Mm. Like, unless I have an extreme goal, something extreme to go after, yeah. I'm anxious. Like I need something. <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh so i give myself these outrageous goals sometimes that like fuel me to give me give me energy to live and so one of the things i decided to do after taking five years off from competition and sustaining multiple injuries god i i've been worked on <laughs> been working on me so i tore both biceps tore my achilles tendon had a hernia repaired fell on my head i literally like have just been broken down mm. for five years it was my chastisement <laughs> god has been beating me up for five years um at the end of it you know I'm, I'm healed up now and a lot of things have changed for me i decided well I'm gonna see if I can keep doing this thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna try one more time now that I'm a master. They call it masters mm. over over 40. So I learned a lot. I learned that it's not I can't just jump right back into it. <laughs> okay. it, it. It hurt and I've got a ton of muscular imbalances. It taught it reminded me that I need to slow down and rebuild my foundation from the ground up. I wanted to do it, I did it, mm -hmm. but now I had to take a few steps back and I mean basic. <laughs> really basic workouts to re and uh so more than anything what was gained was humility what has been gained for me over the past these past five years has been humility mm. uh, realizing that i'm not all that you know i was blessed with a lot of gifts and I kind of took it for granted in a lot of ways. And I think we all sort of do that. Like, you know, we know that even just being born in America, that's a gift. That's a gift. My parents are from Belize. I could have grown up in he heaps of rubble. I, I went back to Belize not too many years, a couple of years ago, and I saw the deplorable conditions in which the people live that I could have, I could have still been there. Yeah. I, it, it, was, it was a grace of God that I came to America and was able to have the opportunities that I had, you know? Um, but it, I think it's a lot, it's easy for us, at least it was for me, and I think for many of us, uh, to forget how blessed we are, either genetically, but also in our circumstances in life. And I took a lot of things for granted, and I think, I know God wanted to show me uh, that I'm not all that, mm. and that these things don't come from me. And if I'm not grateful and don't, and not a good steward of these gifts, 
that they can very easily be taken away. <laughs> and that's, that's mm -hmm. basically what it's been. It's been a matter of God taking these graces away and showing, reminding me that I have to rely on him because I am actually weak. Hey, you know, strength has been the defining characteristic by which I'm internet famous. Mm. But I've discovered that I am weak. I am dirt. I am dust. And I wouldn't have discovered it had I not been humiliated and taught the virtue of humility through these injuries and, uh, and a lot of the, the other things that were taken away from me. Yeah, a amen to that, brother. We, we are blessed to be here in America. We're blessed to be born, born humans. You know, the, the statistic of actually being born a human, it's like 400 trillion to one or whatever Gary Vee wow. talks about. Um, you know, I've experienced a very similar, you know, journey. You know, I spent my life building a physique, um, you know, almost as a shield because I was dealing with a lot of, you know, anxiety and, and fear and shame on the inside. And I thought, well, in order for me to not portray that to the world and, you know, let me just build this incredible, strong, masculine, dominant looking physique. And it wasn't until literally I had my hand shattered, broken on the floor, training taken away from me completely for months to where I had to, my body was broken down. And that's when I began to realize, yeah, you're not anything that you thought you were. <laughs> and here's the mission on why I placed you here. And, and I is the God, you know, I place you on this earth to do this. And that's, you know, this whole podcast has come out of really a multitude of experiences, but, but really it was that, that humbling <laughs> day when I was literally broken on the floor, crying with a hand shattered completely um, and being told you can't step foot in a gym for, for three months. So I 100% resonate with, with that a hundred percent. Um, you know, I, I, I want to address the, the topic of, of fasting. You know, I know this has been something that you've been very passionate about. Um, I believe that for me, it was a major part of my journey, my transformation, me actually being able to take control of that demon that was running my life, which, you know, I shared with you when, when we spoke at the gym, uh, was porn addiction. You know, I, I truly believe that when I started the, the carnivore diet and then I started implementing three-day fast, that it gave me strength um, to take control of much larger things than my addiction to food. So talk about, you know, your approach into fasting, what got you started in doing it. And I know you uh, experimented with some really prolonged fasting. So talk about how you started to integrate that into your life and what you learned uh, about yourself and about call it maybe addiction or consumption. I know you've spoken a lot about these different types of topics. You know, what has fasting taught you? Um, and, and where do you think men can really benefit from having this in, in, in their life? Hmm. <laughs> well, if we don't humble ourselves, then we'll be humiliated. And I think God gives us an opportunity to humble ourselves first and foremost by a very powerful practice. Multiple weeks and that we know about the Bible, all of the teachers, all of the leaders have shown us, all mm -hmm. the saints have shown us, and that is to fast, humble yourself through fasting. And I got to tell you, when God started to tell me just that, and it wasn't something that I read. I wasn't even a, a really faithful guy at the time. I was living for the world. Uh, I had a sense. I had a sense that I needed some humbling. I needed some transformation. I needed a change in my life. And God was telling me, fast, fast. But I, I couldn't because my pride was just too strong. I had way too much pride to give up my muscle, to give up my mm. strength, to give up my energy, to give up what I believed was me by fasting because i knew that fasting would, would would strip strip me down especially the way i was uh, it, it was being presented to me which was you gotta you have to go days and days man you you got a lot of work to do and uh and i didn't listen this was back in like 2015. okay i didn't listen i was like ah, I, I had this sense i just had this sense that i need to fast and i didn't do it and so if I wasn't going to 
humbled myself by fasting. And I, I'm not saying any of this out of like, I learned this. I'm telling you, this is what happened to me. Okay. This is my experience. I had a sense that it was time for me to step down and, and, and humble myself and to, and to subjugate my pride, bring my pride down a little bit, it, it, which was already happening because I was being humiliated in a myriad of different other ways. But God was now asking me to humble myself. Um, but I didn't. So he did it for me by tearing my body apart. Mm. So if I wasn't going to allow my body to, to go through the, 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 the process of fasting and letting go and dropping weight and humbling myself, then God's going to do it for me. And so that's when I started to, I, I tore both biceps, tore my Achilles tendon, had a hernia, uh, fell on my head. It literally just like came, when it rains, it pours. It just all came pouring down on me. Fire and brimstone right down on my head. And, and I even began to lose my mind. You know, a lot of people, they, they contrast. In retrospect, I can see a lot of things I couldn't see even while I was going through it and even shortly thereafter. Um, you talked about demon, you know, the demon of, of pornography and, and, and stuff like that. I opened myself up to a lot of demonic of obsession and oppression and uh, demons were having a good old day, a good old day with me. I even watched some of the videos while I was going through that and the look in my eye, I can tell that there, there's a darkness there. Mm -hmm. I, I went through a dark period and I know that, that a lot of it had to do with my inability or my, or my unwillingness to humble myself and fast. And God, this, uh, and I don't know where this is in the Bible, it says somewhere that, that if, uh, if you if you if you choose this route, you choose the the crooked route, the crooked route, that I'm going to send strong delusion <laughs> mm. to you. I'm going to send you a strong delusion. He says to these people, he's going to send them strong delusions. Man, he sent me a, a shitload of strong delusions. It's like if you're not going to listen, well then I'm going to I'm going to let you, kick you down that route that you're trying to go. And I was under all kinds of strong, diabolical, unresourceful, dark delusion. Uh, and I, I, can, I can only say that because I can look back at myself and see how wrong I was, how proud I was. And so last year, or the year before, 2018, towards the end of 2018, um, I had gone to London. I was on London Real with with uh, with, with uh, get the guy's name now. Brian uh, <laughs> Brian Rose. Yeah, Brian Rose. Yeah, I've been on the show twice. Anyway, uh, I was on it, and something wasn't right. Even while I was there, something wasn't right. But when I got home and I watched my interview, I just this sense came over me that this, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> I'm, I'm ha I have problems and I was look and I was fat. <laughs> Man, there's no reason why I should be that fat. And I it all, wanted to do something with me, but I was in the way. That's really what it was when I was watching the video myself. I was like, God has a whole, a whole lot of, that he wants to express through me. I got a big mouth and I've got a big audience and I know that God wants to work through me, but I'm, I, but I'm, I'm in the way. I'm in the way right now and it's not going to happen until I get out the way. So I decided to start fasting and that's it from November until April because I, it, between November and April uh, was about five, six months until my 40th birthday. And I said, this is it. If I'm going to go into, they say that, you know, life doesn't begin till 40. And now I know why. I said, if I'm going to go into this next season in my life at age 40, coming up here in a few months, I have to die to myself. I really have to let go. I was addicted to smoking weed. Mm. That was another thing. That was another, I think that's where most of the delusion came from. I said God was going to send strong delusion. And he sent me, <laughs> he allowed me to go down that road. And I think, you know, everything happens for a reason. I know everything happens for a reason, and I'm grateful for all of it. But by having, and, and you know, people say that weed is not addicting, 
but I don't think that maybe they got a point in terms of like uh, it's 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 chemical composition. Maybe maybe it's not chemically addicting, but um, the, the craving for it, the need for it, the want for it, the constant it's so it's so uh, seductive. Uh, I couldn't give it up. I couldn't kick it. I couldn't kick it. And so I knew that if I was going to go into my second half, I was going to go into my 40th year, I had to let go of everything. And I couldn't even let go of weed. I could not let go of it. And I asked God to take it away from me. I said, I can't, I'm not even going to try to take care of mm. get this anymore. I've tried too many times. And I can't do it. So you have to take it away from me. But anyway, long story short, which is getting pretty long, uh, I, I, I fasted myself down to the bone. And it was during the fasting that God reminded me about Christ. I had forgotten all about Jesus. I was baptized as a kid. And then, of course, you know, the internet came along and I was very much, I mean, I had volumes and volumes of books on Taoism and Buddhism and Hinduism. I mean, I've always been a seeker for God. All kinds of new age stuff, man. I, you watch my videos, you could hear it. All new, I was so new aged out. It was crazy. So. Mm -hmm. Basically, when I started fasting, I needed, I needed, I wanted inspiration to keep fasting. And, and, and I was introduced to the fathers, to the, to the desert fathers and the fathers of the Eastern, the, the Eastern church or the original church. And uh, I started, I started down that route when God gave me the grace to come back home and accept, accept, appreciate know the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross for us and, and, and be able to humble myself, <laughs> humble myself to accept that because my, my, I'm prideful. My ego, I was way, it's, you can't have faith. It's hard to have faith when you, when, when, when you, when you believe yourself. And I, I only believe myself and I believe the world. And the world is antichrist. The world is against Jesus. The world is against God, especially our Western world, which is run by the Satan. Uh, I couldn't. There was no way. You, you say Jesus in front of me, and I almost was like, "Get the heebie-jeebies! Like, get that, get that away from me!" Mm -hmm. And I saw how that 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 was a demon in and of itself. So uh, here I am today, and it's, uh, they like to say "born again." I, I guess you could say that, but. Uh, Really, it's I like the word repentance. It was okay when I when you repent, that basically means, damn, I was wrong. So all the fasting and everything like woke me up. Mm. I was able to see, and I was like, wow. I, and it was crazy. I didn't realize how wrong I was until at, during the fasting and and going through this process. And I asked God to take this take this scourge of, of weed away from me. Uh, he, then he began to show me, okay, good. You can, I'm going to take this away from you, but guess what? Now that the veil is unlifted, I'm going to show you just how wrong you were. And, and it's just like a movie reel. This, you were wrong about this. You were wrong about that. You were wrong about this. You were wrong about that. And like that alone just came down like a ton of bricks and, uh, and, and gave me impetus. To repent. to repent and when i when, when you repent that means basically i, I admit i was wrong mm -hmm. turn it around i won't do it again and i give myself up i don't think anymore for myself i don't make decisions for myself anymore i don't trust myself at all anymore i put my hands in you lord guide me show me carry me not by my will any longer, but by thine. And so I've been living that way this year. <laughs> it's new. Yeah. It's just brand new for me. No, that's, that's, that's amazing. It's actually, it, it goes right in line with something that I, um, you know, I recently started working with men, you know, struggling with, with porn. And it's a part of our initial couple of weeks process here. It's, it's the repentance. It's the acknowledgement that this issue, this problem that I'm running is wrong. It's gotten out of control. I can't do it by myself. I need your help, uh, God. I need your help, you know, Father, in this process. And then we actually have them map out their life moving forward with porn removed from it. 
But before they sit down and write out what that plan is going to be, I actually put them through. Uh, we just do a 40 hour fast at, at this point. So I wanted to see, because I know you've, you've, you've experimented in, and you've coached a lot of guys through really extended fast. Do you have strategies and tips for people that are maybe out there and they're, they're curious about maybe getting into this? You know, what are some, some, some things that you definitely recommend people do to prepare themselves going into a fast and then how to fight through? Because I know that first 24 hours is you know, when you kind of get to that end of that first day is when it gets really tough. If you're able to push into the middle of day two, that's when you really start to experience a lot of, at least from, from my experience with that's when you really start to notice a lot of the great benefits come towards the middle of day two. So do you have tips or things that you, you recommend to guys that are out there like, hey, you know, I, I like what Elliot's saying. Uh, to help set themselves up to to jump into a fast? Well, one of the terms that's, that's used in the Bible to describe fasting is affliction, to afflict, to afflict oneself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so humble yourself, afflict yourself is to fast. And so the very first thing I, will, I would warn someone and, and invite them to do is to consider that when you fast, it is a by, it's a process by which your ego is going to be challenged and perhaps destroyed. So when the ego doesn't want to die, mm -hmm. the ego wants you, it wants you to feed it. It wants you to pander to it. It wants you to live by it. The world wants you to live by it. But if you recognize that, that, and you make your purpose of fasting, You make the, the reason why you're fasting so that you can let go and die. Fasting is like a dying. Be willing to die. So when it feels, when it feels bad, when it feels uncomfortable, when you don't know why you're doing it, you got to remind yourself that it's because I need to die to my old self. I need to die to this version of myself. I need to die to my ego. And then in that, allow yourself to be to be reborn again, literally reborn. Mm. This process of autophagy that science is now showing yeah. happens when we fast, it literally is your, your cells, it speeds up the, the death and rebirth of your cells. Mm. So by fasting, you, you, of course, your, your soul, your mind, your heart is all being renewed because the ego has no choice but to subjugate itself to the weakness of your body now. But then now the weakness of your body in that fasted state goes through a regenerative process. So there's that. And I say, you got to fast for the right reasons. You know, I, I, when I started fasting, even then, like my ego was still so damn strong that I was, I was fasting and I became vain about it. Like, yeah. What would be a, what would be a wrong reason that somebody would get into fasting? Vanity, vanity, vanity for this world, for anything of this world. Let me put it that way. If you're, and it's tough because, you know, I'm, I know I'm talking to a secular group and talking to people. I, you know, I don't want to sound like we're a religious fanatic, but this is where I am these days. Mm. That if I'm doing anything, it has to be for eternity. But whatever I do these days, I have to ask myself and I, gotta, and I have to constantly remind myself that is this leading me closer to God and to heaven? Or is this leading me closer to this material world? Is illusion, is delusion, is diabolical? And to eternal death, to damnation. So yeah, that's that's that that's that's built into you know the tagline of of the show. You know, it's the superhuman life dedicated to helping men break free from the shackles of porn addiction through the power of faith and fitness. You know, yeah. we're all created for a purpose, and this you know called meat suit or vessel that we're living in is mm -hmm. simply the the vehicle for us to experience all this life that, that God is creating for us. So um, you're right in line with, with everything that I'm trying to, yeah. you know, put into this world through, through this podcast. So um, on the right path, man, we got, we can't live for this world any longer. You know, my tagline used to be, be the strongest version of yourself, but I, I don't I can't live by that anymore. It's not about myself. Live for the, live for heaven, live for eternity. I got it. I, just where I'm at right now, the eyes got to be taken off of this world. Building up and stacking and amassing in this world is useless. It's all going to go away because guess what? Every single one of us dies. You're going to mm -hmm. die. You're going to die. 
The world doesn't like us to remember that. They want us to think, oh, you're only going to live once. And oh, enjoy everything that you can. I mean, why not jerk off? Feels good. Why not smoke weed every day? It feels good. Why not eat till you, you, you eat until you're uh, obese? It feels good. But then you're going to die. And it's, it's science. Mm. That energy is, it, it never disappears. It only transmutates. So you can, you, can, you can try to make scientific sense of it, but if you have faith, you just accept the dogma that there is heaven and hell, that there's an afterlife. And if I'm stacking up and I'm focused and I'm doing everything in order to enjoy this world, then that's, a, that's the fastest road to hell. So do you have, do you have non-negotiables, things that you practice every day, whether it's in the morning, throughout the day, as the day is moving or at night before bed to ensure that you're staying in line with that? Like, how do you tap into making sure that every decision, every step action, obviously we're all sitting and it's not always going to be hundred percent, but how does Elliot ensure that he is not living for this world and he is living for eternity? Well, by the grace of God, I was baptized as Catholic when I was a kid and as a Catholic, and mind you, this is all brand new to me. I just came back, uh, you know, so I'm not talking like from a place of authority. I'm talking from a place of experience and feeling it out. I'm feeling all this stuff out. I'm living on my edge right now. Mm -hmm. um, when God came to me that day, man, it was just overwhelming when I think about it. Every time I, I say that, it, I get goosebumps because it was a scary day. And he told me to repent. I said, well, what does that mean? I said, go to confession. What, what do you, what, confession what? I said, yeah, that's right. Remember when you were a kid, you went to Sunday school and, the, and, and you were gifted with these sacraments. Wow. So I said to myself, okay, I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to do what God says. I went back to the Catholic church. And the reason why we confess our sins and get, is or, in order to receive abs absolution, which means, and this is the way it's taught in the Catholic faith, and this is the way I'm describing it. This is where I'm at right now. That when you receive that absolution from a priest, from one of God's soldiers, one of his helpers here on the planet, that all of your sins are forgiven. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. That's the way I believed it. That's the way I took it. And then the idea from that point out is to live in a state of grace. Mm -hmm. So once we've repented, and uh, you know, it doesn't whatever denomination you are, you know, that's your belief. Take it the way you want. Uh, but the whole idea is to recognize you were wrong, confess you were wrong, confess to God if that's the way it is, works for you, it doesn't matter. But get it off your chest, get it off your heart, ask for forgiveness, turn around, you gotta turn around. And then it is our main objective here on this planet to stay in a state of grace with the Lord. It's constant, you want every single day, you wanna stay, make sure that you're staying in a state of grace, by even if you're not even aware, I ask God for forgiveness from the sins that I don't even know that I'm committing. Because a lot of times I didn't know that I'm committing these sins. And then like later on, I found out, oh man, that was, it was later on that I realized, wow, that was mortal sin. I was, that I was doing just out of ignorance because this world invites you down that road of sin. This world, I say it makes it very easy, very enticing for you to live in a state of sin. And so by, in order to stay in a state of grace, we pray, mm. pray every day, ask for repentance every day, every day I pray. This is, this is my process. You ask me about what do I do? Pray every day, I do the rosary. I pray the rosary every day for the graces that are afforded us by intercession from the Virgin Mary, mother of God, praying for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Uh, and I go to mass, I go to mass every day to receive and be a part of the body of Christ so that I am a part of, so I am partaking of his sacrifice. Every day I die, every day when I participate in the mass, I'm dying to a part of myself and being reborn in that moment. Every day it's like being washed clean. Every day I get washed clean. And then before I go to bed at night, I consecrate myself to the Lord I pray with my wife. I ask to keep my even my dreams. 
keep me, keep me, because in my dreams I sin. I had to ask God for forgiveness the other night. I was having some sin, some dreams, some sinful dreams, because my soul was is is so polluted. I can't mm-hmm. help it. <laughs> and then stay free from mortal sin. You know, do the right thing. Staying free from mortal sin is pretty easy. Is just do the right thing, right? And so by staying in a state of grace, by doing those things, when I die, my hope, I don't want to be presumptuous, and I know I have a lot to make up. Lord knows I have a ton to make up. Years and years, decades of sin to make up. And that's one of the things that Catholics believe also. Is that you got to do penance, right? And I understand that Catholic theology is different than a lot of Protestant theology, but this is, this is where I'm at. And the Lord says, you got to do penance. You did you a lot of wrong things. So every, every time I pray, it's a penance. Every time I do something right, I ask the Lord to receive it as a penance. And so that when I do die, hopefully I don't go to hell. I don't make any. God only gives so many graces. We only, each one of us only have a certain amount of graces. So I pray that I, you know, I ask Jesus every day, save me from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. And if I do go to purgatory, that hopefully these acts that I'm performing every day go toward my penance so that I can see the Lord face to face as quickly as possible upon my death. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And I, and I appreciate your framing of that as, you know, this is you're sharing what you're doing, what's currently working and what you're currently going through the process of learning. Like I myself am not on this podcast framing myself in an expert of really anything. You know, I launched this because of my story, my journey. I felt that there was a message that needed to be broadcasted into the world. So every single one of these conversations that I have, I love when the guest shares it from their perspective and framing it as, Hey, this is what I'm currently doing. Test it, try it, tweak it, make it your own. But I'm the same way. You know, I'm, I'm very, very early in, you know, in my walk with Christ, it was just good Friday of last year. So Easter weekend of 2019, I got baptized right here, uh, in, in Tampa at, at the church that we attend. And yeah, I, I live every day through, through the grace of God and, you know, Mm -hmm. pray every morning and, and pray every night with, with Stephanie before, before we go to bed. And it's just, knowing that for 35 years of my life, I tried to do it all on my own and figure all this stuff out. And it literally got me to the point where I shared earlier, I was like on the ground, broken, Mm -hmm. five year old man, 250 pounds, jacked and shredded, but I was broken in tears. You could have zapped it life out of me and I wouldn't have cared at that point. So that's, that's what Frank does on his own. Frank now with his walk with Christ is on this whole, whole new mission, which (laughs) is where, yeah. I want to take a slight pivot to, uh, because I wouldn't be doing justice to the podcast and the listeners if I didn't bring up the topic of pornography with mm-hmm. you. So what are your views, opinions on porn? What's it doing to the men of today? What's it doing to the kids of today? Um, and let's just, let's just open it up and let's just make this a, an open dialogue. But, but where's porn at in, you know, in, in your view perspective? And I have my beliefs. I, I think it's, a true demonstrative demon that is that is ruining the men yeah. of the world. But you know what's 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 Elliot's take on the topic of pornography? Well, I agree with you. I think that it is a scourge upon mankind, and that the minute and this is where I heard it described by someone, and I t- and I take it for for its value, face value, that the first time your eyes meet pornography, your sanctity is ruined because you will no longer be able to see the sexual act. You will no longer be able to be with a woman. You will no longer have normal sexuality by, by watching it just once. It perverts, it perverts the mind, it perverts the heart and it perverts the body. It is, it, it's so destructive on so many different levels, but yet it's so enticing. Mm. It's something that like, I remember when I was probably like in fifth or sixth grade, the first time seeing like uh, naked magazines 
All right? I, mean, I, I forget where I was. I think, I think somebody like hid it in the woods and me and my friends were hiding in the woods and we found it. We were like, and just like the first, you know, like the first time smoking weed or the first time drinking, yeah. But even the first time having sex, first time busting a nut. Most of us, <laughs> I don't think the first time we had sex was the first time we busted a nut. <laughs> the first time seeing pornography was like, wow. And just remembering that experience, right? Because I didn't suffer with the same way you did. My story is a little bit different, but I can relate because I remember that experience as a kid. Um, I recognize just how primal or, or how, how it tugs at instincts that are beyond our conception. We don't even understand. Mm. It, just, it just tugs you right down. So much so that now it's so different. We ha I had to go looking in the woods. We were playing in the woods and we, it was halfway buried and we found it. Now, we literally, my kids all have one of these devices. Yep. We literally can just go and find it. So uh, I have to protect, and those of you have, uh, have children, you gotta protect your children. I say sons, but even daughters now, like girls are, girls are suffering from porn addiction too. And here's, here's the thing, yeah, here's the thing, and not to, not to cut you off, but you know, the thing I'm trying to bring awareness to, it's, it's, you don't even need to go to, you don't even need to type in the www site. Like if your kids are on social media, if they're on, Instagram, if they're on TikTok, if they're on any of these platforms out there, it's, it's already existing. You, the, like there's no parental controls that you can put on there. If they have an Instagram account, if they wanted to, they could find it. I've, since I've started opening up and talking more and more about it on my social, I'm getting, you know, I'm obviously getting a lot of love and support from guys and, and, and women that are supporting what I'm doing, but I'm also getting the other side. I'm getting the people that are in support of porn and just full blown, like, yeah, I'm addicted to porn and I love it. So I'm getting these comments from pages. I've had to delete them and block them from my page. But it's like you click on somebody's profile and it's just a gallery right there on your Instagram profile of nudity, sex, graphic yeah. images that if you're a kid with, a, with, a, with an Instagram, so for the parents out there, this is an awareness. Exactly what Elias is saying. It's, it's no longer because I was the same thing. Yeah, we had to build a fort out in the woods and steal the magazines from our parents and then go hide them. And it'd be yeah. like, we meet up every afternoon to look at them. Nowadays, it's literally like we're walking around with it like in our pockets. Um, so 100% on, on target. What? Are you familiar with the, 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 the Dave Asprey quote? I just want to acknowledge you. Thank you for bringing up Instagram because I've been going ham trying to block all these websites and stuff. And the, the minute you brought that up, I'm like, oh man, I, I still got work to do. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, um, you know, going back to to talking about what I what I do with my guys here, it's like that's step one because I know for me, you know, Instagram would would be a trigger. You know, like in the fitness space, you know, ninety percent of the girls in the fitness space are their, their posts are what we used to see in the magazines back in the day, you know? And it's like, this is like a girl that's just promoting like her leg workout. And if you look at it, it's like, okay, that's not really fitness workout. That's way more graphic. So for me, it was definitely like, I'd be scrolling through Instagram trigger. Let me go upstairs and take care of business. So I, I understand the, the process, but, but yeah, for parents out there, for guys, if you're struggling with this issue, the first place to look is right there on the people that you're following. Remove yeah. them. Like it, 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 it yes. doesn't serve you in any way, shape, or form at all. Are you familiar with the, the, Dave, the Dave Asprey quote? Uh, something along the lines, um, porn is the high fructose corn syrup of sex. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, high fructose sex. corn syrup, like it, it tastes good going in. It makes you feel good initially. And then an hour or so later, you're laying down on the couch or, you know, that food is settling in your belly and it just makes you feel like crap. But after, after experiencing the taste of that, then the normal all natural whole foods never taste as good as they're supposed to, unless you go through a fasting period to reset your palate, to resensitize, to do all that. So just going back to exactly what you were saying, it's like once you've experienced or seen it for just the first time, the natural act of sex will never be the same again yeah what a shame yeah so what do you think that men need to do you know i know you coach 
millions of men, you know, through your videos, I've heard you describe yourself as a, as a leader, as a father to men out there in the world. Like if somebody is out there and they're struggling with, you know, with this porn, porn addiction, like, like what do you think would be the first handful of steps that they need to go through? Is it uh, a recognize of the issue of repentance or are there actual steps that maybe they can, they can implement into their life? Well, I mean, truth be told, I think you would have a better answer for that than me, simply because you've been through the experience, you, you know what it feels like to be there and how to, how to navigate your way out of the dark. Mm. But I think what's important for us to begin to recognize as an overall life paradigm is how wrong we are about women and how wrong women are about fashion. Because what we're talking about in terms of internet and, and, and Instagram is, is all day, every day out there in the street. And number one, I have daughters and I fight with them because it's me against the world a lot of times. I had a big argument with my daughter yesterday because she knows that I do not approve of showing the belly. If you're wearing a shirt, the shirt should cover your, there's no reason for your navel to be out. Now I can't, if we're going to the beach and you're gonna wear a bathing suit, fine. Right? I, I try not to, to be that, but I want to be. I want to be that conservative. But I get it. They're going to have to make their own decisions. But it is a weapon. When they dress that way, it is a weapon. And it's a, it's a tyranny and it's a violence against men. Because they control us from, through sex. There's no question about it. The only reason why Adam took the apple from Eve is because he knew he was going to get some or he was going to lose some if he didn't go with her. He'd rather go down the hell of the road with, with Eve than to lose the pussy. And that's really where we are, for the most part, with men, with, with women. We do what they want us. And this is why feminism has such a strong hold on us. Because we bow, we kowtow, and we, and we, and we give up our power to women because sex. And if sex is a weapon that, that is that strong to tear down an entire society through feminism, we got to recognize that every time a woman walks by you, wearing revealing clothing, seductive looking clothing, dressing and being in a seductive way. She is disrespecting herself, she's disrespecting you, and she's causing violence to you. And it shouldn't be accepted, it really shouldn't be. It, it's, it's wrong, I think we gotta get that into our mind that the fashions are, are demonic, the way the women are, are dressing is violent, and what we need to do is stop accepting it. And the first way we stop accepting this, because that's where the porn begins. The porn begins in the streets. Porn begins in the school. And look, I'm a 40-year-old man, father of three daughters, and I'm a, I've been married since I was 23 years old. I've been with my, the same woman since I was a teenager. But even today, I'm driving, and there's a woman who's got a sh real short shorts, and I see legs. I cannot, it just, my eyes just have to do this. And like, I, wa I want to like, <laughs> I want to pluck my eyes out sometimes because I'm driving and I'm like, I get mad too. And this is what my, my next point, but I'll tell you, you know, that, that I struggle too. I'm not struggling mm. with porn, but I struggle because the women are walking around with weapons that, that, that tug on that, that weak part of us that make us addicted to porn. So, so, so here you go. Next time, next time that happens, you got a little prayer that you can say. So, Thank you, Lord, for creating that woman's beauty and that it's not mine to participate in. And simple, and leave it. And just an acknowledgement of that is a beautiful woman. She was created by the same God that I was created for, and her beauty is there for a reason, but it's not mine to participate in. I agree. Look, I mean, there was a time when that was really frowned upon. There was a time before the 1960s or maybe the late 1950s, where you, that was frowned upon. Women do not do that. It's not right for them, and it's not right for us. And the Muslims, even today, they cover the women from head to toe. And I'm, you know, not making here or there of Muslims, but a lot of the Muslim men are a lot more manly than us Christian men here in the West. I'm not saying we need to cover women from head to toe, but you retain a lot of your strength as a man by not even being tempted to look. 
And so I like the prayer. Uh, I like that idea. I say we just got to train ourselves. We got to train ourselves. And coming from me, this is crazy because I can't even believe I'm saying this because there was a time where I was completely on the other end of the spectrum here. But this is where I am today. And, and we have to deny our lower self. We got to deny our lower self because it serves, it serves us in zero capacity. Bussing nuts for entertainment serves mm. us in zero capacity. Sex is useless. Sex is completely useless outside of the fact that we want to bring children into the world. Really, if you look at it, if you're really logical and you put away your emotion, your neediness, your feminacy as it relates to sex, you don't need it. That's why I tell men monk or marriage. And so if we're going to not be married and we're going to be men, we got to train ourselves not to need pussy not to need women, not to need porn, but not even need to look. And so I, I don't know if this is the right way. Just tell me where I'm at. But, yeah, um, and, and I think, you know, a lot of guys are going to, you know, they're going to shrug their shoulders at this or like, what are the, you know, what are these guys talking about? But, you know, I, 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 I too buy into, you know, the sexual, you know, the sexual energy, you know, belief and, you know, Napoleon Hill sitting right back here on my, on my shelf talks about, you know, the art of sexual transmutation. I think it's in chapter 12 or 13 of thinking grow rich, you know? Yeah. We were, we were given this, this ability to create either create humans, create, put things out into the world, you know, just what we're doing here with this, uh, with this conversation, everything that you've done in, in your life's work has been a creation from inside of you. And when you can really withhold uh, from sex, from that physical release and harness that same force, that same sexual creative energy into a different outlet, uh, the possibilities are, are in essence limitless. Um, you know, I had people actually laugh at me when I told them that, like when I, went through, I think the term is no fap or whatever, but mm -hmm. you know, when I, when I was like 90 days into breaking free from porn and, you know, stopped having sex completely with, with my girlfriend, we weren't married. You know, I was, I wanted to, uh, respect her. And, and obviously I was somebody that was, was masturbating multiple, multiple times a day. So when I actually stopped that for a handful of weeks and led into like 90 days, like my creative ability like shot through the roof. Like I literally felt at times limitless and boundless. Like I could stand here and jump over that building. Now I never tried it because it probably wouldn't have happened, but I actually felt like if I put enough focus into doing it, that I could have accomplished anything in, in the world. So I guess my advice to a man out there, like if this is you, if you are that person that is, I think you use the term busting nuts, uh, you know, multiple, multiple times a day or multiple times a week. And you're just not happy with where your life is. Give it a shot. Go 30 days, go 60 days, go 90 days without it, but focus on harnessing and putting it into something different. And I can't promise anything is going to come out of it, but if you truly commit to it and you, and you work towards creating something new, your life will change and your life will transform. And, and that's my goal with these guys that I'm, that I'm working, working with now. So, um, that's awesome. I just, I, I definitely wanted to, to get your opinion and, and, and address that with you wouldn't have, wouldn't have done justice. So, um, out of respect for, for, for your time and everybody's time, I want to kind of bring, bring this home, uh, and, and wrap it up here. But before we go, I just want to ask you, you know, kind of, kind of some rapid fire, rapid fire questions. Um, as you can see behind me, I'm, a big, big fan of books. It's, it's been a big part of, of my life. And, and I know you are a seeker of knowledge, a, a seeker of wisdom, so to speak. Um, so are there, are there top three, top five books kind of in Elliot's library or in his arsenal, uh, that he recommends to, to men, whether they're, they're looking to get stronger, looking to grow as a man, looking to step into who they were, were created to be. Like, do you have a, do you have a top three, top five list for guys out there? Man, uh, I just got rid of, I just put straight into the garbage can about 70% of my books. Mm. And so rather than answering your question in a straightforward way, I'm just going to say where I'm at today. And that is, I don't want any more knowledge. I don't want any more knowledge. I don't want to become any more clever. I don't want more words to use. I don't, I want to be simple. 
I'm trying to, I'm at this point where I want to strip away. I want to forget. I want to get rid of. I want to, I just want to be pure and simple. So I stop. I stop reading books. I stop buying books. And the only things I read are the words of the Bible, the catechism, and the words of the fathers. The words of the fathers and the saints. And that's it. I don't want anything else. Even if it, because all that reading just fed my ego. All that knowledge just fed my ego. All it did was just give me more words to sound smart or more stuff to ruminate about. All that thinking is useless. Like I said before, I don't even trust my own thoughts anymore because they come from a myriad of different sources that they almost con they almost contradict themselves. I watch videos of myself and I'm constantly contradicting myself because I'm just, uh, I'm just regurgitating what I've read in the thousands of books that I read. So I just stop. I just stop. I don't, I don't want to know anything else. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Now I'm, I'm almost scared to ask you this, this next question, man. Um, but I'm going to do it anyways. So you are, uh, you know, we use the term internet famous at, at the beginning here, but you're obviously an extremely successful businessman. You know, your, your strength camp, strength camp international, you have your grounding camps, you have your YouTube millions of followers. What things is, is Elliot working on currently uh, that he's most excited about, you know, creating and bringing into the world? Salvation of my soul. Salvation of my soul and fulfilling my vocation as a father. Those are the two most important things to me. Awesome. Yeah, um, I'd love to have you on again, maybe down in the future. I know we didn't even talk about your, your family quite a, you know, really, really at all. But, um, you know, I appreciate everything that, that you're doing, everything that you are. Um, obviously, you know, majority of people hearing this are going to know who you are and, and, and where you're at. But if they're interested in, in tapping into more, where can people find, find Elliot at? Where's the best place to, to hear more of anything that we discussed here today? Uh, you know, I'm, <laughs> I, I don't want to be anywhere anymore. I want to, I want to die to the world. And so I really don't, I'm not very active online at all. Uh, the only place where I'm still active is Instagram. And mostly I have my team taking care of that. So if you want to see what's going on, if I've got any offers, I got any events, anything that's going on, you know, you go to, go to my Instagram, otherwise ElliotHulse.com or ElliotHulse.co, two different websites. One is more of my commerce website, okay. and my blog and stuff on. But um, I'm going to speak at the 21 convention later on uh, this spring. I, I got a couple of events. I've been doing fasting camps. Mm. So a lot of my, a lot of my work, I, I, I live with my heart on my sleeve. It's hard for me to do anything that doesn't come from my heart. Not out of, not out of, uh, any, not any, out of any moral reason, but just because that's the way I am. It's always been the way I am. So, you know, fasting and faith is huge right now. And what's, and it's what I'm offering, you know, if you like to hear things I'm talking about. Uh, the other thing is that I'm, I'm most, as far as offering something, I've, I've got a program called King Transformation. And that, and you know, one of the things that I do is if you want to stay up to date, because I'm always changing. People say old Elliot, new Elliot, what's Elliot up to now? You know, in a lot of ways, I've been scatterbrained. Mm. Um, but people enjoy it. Uh, King Transformation, in order to keep people up to date with my latest, the latest things that are going on. Uh, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate that. I know you don't want to, you know, you don't want to promote yourself. So I'll do the best that I possibly can to, to pull all the links and everything and, and make sure that down there in the show notes, if people want to hear more, whether it's you putting the content out or, or your team, I know there's going to be people interested in, and at least following along with, with what you're doing. So I appreciate you. Um, before we go here today, I always have one final question that I ask every single guest. Um, you know, obviously the show is, is dedicated to helping men break free from, from addiction through faith and fitness. I've talked about that a handful of times. It's titled The Superhuman Life. You know, I believe that when we truly harness uh, our belief in what we were created for, uh, we can create the life of our dreams. Anything that we, um, that we want to accomplish is, is already inside of us. So one thing I ask every single guest is 
what's your definition of living a superhuman life? I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, the whole concept just sounds too prideful to me. <laughs> Look, and I'm not knocking you because like I said, I, I grew famous on the, on the tagline, be the strongest version of yourself, superhuman strongest version. Uh, it, to be superhuman, I would say is to be stronger than to be mind over matter, be stronger than the flesh, right? Like the work, the things that you're doing, that's superhuman to be able to give up pornography, to give up jerking off, to give up addiction to busting nuts. That's superhuman because if you're going to think of human, the word human, hue comes from humus, dirt. We come from dirt and we're weak. And if you're going to be human, just human, you're going to be weak. You're going to be addicted to jerking off. You're going to be addicted to food. You're going to be addicted to smoking weed. You're going to be addicted to women. You're going to be addicted to technology. You're going to be, you're going to be dragged in all kinds of various different ways. Superhuman means I'm stronger than the flesh. And, you know, I was thinking about it the other day that we say mind over matter, which is super important. That's a great first start. To be superhuman, yeah, mind over matter, meaning I'm not controlled by my lower capacities, my lower inclinations are not gonna drive me, Ang which means emotions. You're being driven by anger, fear, even the so-called good emotions. If you're being driven by pleasure, the seeking for joy, oh, and here's one that we just take for granted, and everybody thinks that life is about being happy. If you're, if you're driven by the need to be happy, you're driven by your lower faculties. Life is not about being happy. It has nothing to do with being happy. So if you can get over those lower qualities, both the, the quote unquote positive and negative ones, rise up above your emotion and its weaknesses and its fickleness and live in rationality, you know, be, be, be discerning and, and be thoughtful and be stoic, you're doing a whole lot towards being superhuman because the brain is what makes us, is, is really what makes us human. We're, we're above the animals. Most, you wouldn't know it, the way most people live, that we're above the animals, we really are, no matter what the globalists and the environmentalists. I think environmentalism is a, is a new age religion too. They try to make us think like the animals are more important than us, but it's, it's not. If you realize that it's our gift to think, to use our brain, it's also a gift, and this is the way I, I was trying to think about it. It's like, if mind over matter is important, what's beyond the mind in, in which is fake. So I like to say divine over mind. Mm. So you really want to be superhuman. You, then you go beyond the mind. See, the mind is important because it will help us go beyond the body, beyond the, the, the weakness of the body. Mind can rise above that. But the mind is a, mind can destroy you too. The mind is a, is a, can destroy us just as much because it can get filled with all kinds of errors. And that's why I stopped reading, right? Not that I stopped reading, but I, I, I'm not quick to, to uh, propound any uh, contemporary books, most books. Like, it's just more ego feed. We're, we're doing, and we're gonna keep ascending, and we literally have to get above the mind and go to the divine. And, and the crazy and the strange and the wild contradictory thing about the divine is that it's no mind. Mm. There's no mind in the divine. That means all my judgment ceases. All my evaluation ceases. All of my hopes, fears, and dreams ceases. All of my desires cease. And it is purely living in the will of the Lord. You want to be superhuman? Those are the steps. Spot on, brother. For somebody that was unsure about the question and sat there and, and, and thought about it, I don't know if I could have put into words 
my my beliefs any i mean i think you i think you yeah i, I don't know if i'll ever be able to ask that question to anybody <laughs> ever again um divine over mind mind over matter living a superhuman life Elliot Hulse, brother, I appreciate you so much for, for your time today. I appreciate you for everything you're doing for, for men in the world, for women in the world as, as well. Um, <clears throat> going to continue to support and follow along. And if there's anything I can do to, to help, you know, grow whatever it is you're, you're trying to do over there, just want you to know that, that I'm here. So, so I appreciate you. And for all you guys out there that are, that are listening to this episode, if this is your first time tuning into the Two Brain in Life, we just want to say thank you for tuning in and lending us your ear today. We hope that this podcast found value towards you. And if it did, uh, if you could do us just these two things, make sure to hit that subscribe button um, so you continue to get notified every time a new episode is released. Uh, but most importantly, and this is what this show really comes down to, is we are trying to have uh, a massive impact in the world and try to help men that are struggling with any of these issues that we talked about here today. So whether it's you or somebody out there in your life that you know can find value out of this episode, do us just this one favor and send them this link. But as we part here today, I just want to thank Elliot once again, Frank Rich. Love you guys all.